188.2 pounds. I guess I'm just gonna have to face the fact that that is my weight. I'm not gonna get back down to the 177 I was when we went to St. Martin. Damn, did I look good in those videos. So, Lawn Dog, <clears throat> Lawn Dog, Lawn Dog, so Lawn Moon, Lawn, so, Lawn Dog Moon 2. Was one really taken? I mean, that's super interesting. It's almost like Leonard Part 6. Lawn Dog Moon 2 visited GetConvinced.com, which is my podcasting site. You should give it a listen. And he saw a photo of Cameron Crowe and I holding this book right here. And he wants to know what the story behind it is. So I'm going to tell that story today. But first, we have some errands to run. I have to go in and see the cashier. For those of you who don't know Cameron Crowe's story, uh, it's pretty much told in the movie Almost Famous. When he was like uh, 15 years old, he wrote for Rolling Stone and went on tour with a bunch of bands. When he was 22 years old, he uh, got his publisher, which was Simon and Schuster to allow him and then he got a principal to agree to allow him to go to school with a bunch of teenagers to pen what the kids these days were actually thinking and that's what gave birth to this book you know I have a bunch of crap that I have to do today but I think instead I'm just going to go around and take you guys to some film locations that I've never seen because in the words of Ferris Bueller, Life moves pretty fast. You don't stop and look around once in a while, you could miss it. And that'll tell this story better. So, let's go to high school. A 22-year-old Cameron Crowe convinced a high school principal to allow him to go back to school with a bunch of teenagers to write this book. At a school very much like this one. Not this exact school, because this is the exact school that was used in the movie, Fast Times at Ridgemont High, which is why I'm here. So how did I end up with this book? Well, I wanted to write a script that was in the vein of Fast Times at Ridgemont High. And I needed to learn how to write like a master like Cameron Crowe. So I sought out this book, which is very rare. This is a first edition. It was never reprinted. They're hard to come by. This thing cost me $120. And my intent was to buy the book, read it, compare it to the script, and then resell the book. Problem is, after I bought the book, I fell in love with the book. And I read it again, and I read it again, and I just couldn't let go of it. So I ended up holding on to it. You might also recognize the school from the TV show The Wonder Years. And the movie Christine was also filmed here. And also, Robert Redford went here, and so did Marilyn Monroe. Right now, it seems that the local radio station K-Rock is shooting something here. Rumor is they might actually be shooting a remake of the movie Valley Girl. This is where Stacy tells Mike Damone that she likes him right in front of the school. And when you cross the street, that mural is in the movie. It's still there. So one day while playing Cards Against Humanity with some friends, a friend of ours, Jill, says that she helped the prop master on Cameron Crowe's new movie, We Bought a Zoo, do all of the zoo props. And that she could go to the set and take a look at it if she wanted. I begged her to take me, and she did. This location probably doesn't look familiar to any of you, because this is the Sherman Oaks Galleria, and it completely crushed in the 94 earthquake and was rebuilt. But before that, Fast Times at Ridgemont High was filmed here, Terminator 2 was filmed here, Commando was filmed here, and I think so was Valley Girl. Also, interestingly, the character Rat, who works at the movie theater here, who begs for Mike Damone's help with Stacy, in real life, Rat grows up to create the Four Dummies book series. This here is the actual dugout that Stacy loses her virginity to Ron in Fast Times at Ridgemont High. And during that scene, gonna be somebody's baby tonight is playing in the background, which I believe was actually written for this movie. Uh, so Stacy lost her virginity. I guess it's a good time to talk about me losing my Cameron Crowe virginity. So when we arrived on the set of We Bought a Zoo, 
which was filmed out in Thousand Oaks, Westlake Village on a private ranch that we couldn't, I couldn't take you to, couldn't get, even get access to today. But when we arrived on set, Scarlett Johansson was shooting this scene under the Welcome to Rossmore sign. And there was music blaring in the background. And I was like, what's, what's that? There's an on-set DJ. Cameron has an on-set DJ who has like a hand truck that he pushes around with speakers on it and stuff. And Cameron has him play songs to invoke a mood into the actors so they can emote what their scene should be. That's how he uses music. And that was my first experience with Cameron Crowe and breaking my Cameron Crowe virginity. Texting and driving is illegal, but I'm not sure vlogging and driving is illegal. So I grabbed for the GoPro, I don't wanna hold up my phone. I am super excited about this next location. It is Brad and Stacy's house. I've never actually been to Brad and Stacy's house, so this is gonna be pretty fun. Holy crap, this is actually Brad and Stacy's house from Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Stacy waited for Damone right here, he never showed up. One of the most iconic scenes in cinema history was shot in this backyard. You know which one I'm talking about. I did a parody of it. So I arrived on set and we bought a zoo and I was holding this book with me. And when Cameron saw it, he walked up to me immediately. He knew what it was, it drew him toward me. Producers were like confused because they didn't understand why he paid attention to me. And immediately he started talking to me. And I mean talking to me. It wasn't like he talked at me or was just like, hey, how's it going, acknowledging a fan. The dude warmly spoke to me. Um, and we talked about the book and we talked about filmmaking and he happily signed it, which was epically awesome. Uh, and I hung around set and one of the coolest things was Haley Steinfeld showed up on set. She was not nominated yet and I got to meet her and I was hanging out behind the scenes, behind the camera with Cameron watching scenes and there was a point where he shot Matt Damon and then Damon came over to take a look how the scene had turned out and Haley was standing to the left of me, Matt Damon was to the right of me, Cameron Crowe was in the front of me and the three of us were watching the monitors. It was insane. It was insanely awesome. I am back in Granada Hills and you might recognize Chatsworth Street as the street that Brad drives down when he rips off his pirate costume and throws it out the window. Another cool thing on set, this photo was shot by Neil Preston. Neil Preston is a famed photographer of rock and roll artists and Neil has continued to be Cameron's set photographer. Neil was on set and when Neil saw this, he too autographed it. Neil said that this is probably the only copy in existence that has both his and Cameron's autographs on it. Most importantly, I met Crystal the Capuchin. She's really the superstar. Hopefully you guys could see that this was not a quickie vlog to assemble. I put some effort into it, as I try to all the vlogs. So smash that thumbs up button for me. And make sure you're subscribed and you have notifications turned on. And if you liked it, share this baby with your friends. And if you want to see other film locations, comment below. What would you like to see? I could also tell the story of how I met Hugh Hefner or how I met Kevin Smith. So if you like these and you want to see more, smash that thumbs up button. I forgot to set the tracker, so I don't know how long the dog walk was, but it probably was amazing speeds, like way faster than Casey Neistat ever is. So time to try the pull up. Some of you were wondering how this pull up bar works. It doesn't really put weight on this jam up here, although the sheer strength on this jam is pretty high. What it actually does is when you pull here, you're pushing this bar this way. And through this loop, you're pushing this toward the wall. And that's actually what's holding you up. My nephew, Brett, who is a Marine, says for a official pull-up to count when they do their tests, it needs to be done from a dead hang. So, I'm gonna try that. 
Come on! Yeah, I'm there.